So the next component that we are going to discuss is an inductor. Um, and of course, inductors can be modeled. You, you would typically draw an inductor in, um, for example, momentum or EMX, and then extract the S parameters. And it's always nice to convert those S parameters or um, to an equivalent model, because an equivalent model, a circuit model, with components that are hopefully frequency independent. Uh, as I discussed earlier, this is not always the case, but if these components are frequency independent, then we can reason about it. So our inductor is here. We have already seen that that inductor will have some series resistance and that this resistance is heavily dominated by the skin effect. So this resistor RS is not your traditional resistor because it is slightly frequency dependent. So it's something to take in, in mind. We have seen that skin effect typically leads to uh, a dependency with square root of omega. Then I have some uh, capacitance to the oxide. Okay, that's that's going to give rise uh, to a resonance frequency. There's also a capacitance between the two terminals, and um, the, the 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 oxide capacitance is important because here I see another resistance, the substrate resistance. Very difficult to model that one, um, and obviously these things heavily change at RF versus millimeter wave. Why? Well, if you think about it, and you have the silicon substrate. And then here you have your top metal layer. Um, if you make an, an RF inductor, it's fairly large. And you could say that you see a lot of the substrate. If you make a millimeter wave inductor, you need a smaller inductor value, right? Um, so you see less of the substrate. The oxide capacitance is, is heavily reduced. And so the substrate resistance is far less influencing the millimeter wave performance of an inductor versus the RF performance of an inductor. All right, so taking that into account, let's simplify things as we always do in this course. Um, let's just say um, that we can somehow boil it down to an, an, an inductor with a, uh, an inductor, an ideal inductor with a series resistance and with a parallel resistance. And that parallel resistance is then somehow linked to the substrate. And Suppose I would only have a series resistance, then I would actually see, or and I'm in, in, in practice, I'm seeing an increase of the quality factor because the you know, quality factor is, is the impedance of the inductor, what you want, the impedance that you want divided by the impedance you don't want. That's what I, how I always remember it. So you, the impedance that you want is omega L. The impedance you don't want is the series resistance. That series resistance is proportional to the square root of omega. So this series inductance is still proportional to square root omega because I have omega here and I divide by square root omega. So as frequency increases, I will have, let's make myself smaller here, as the frequency increases, that quality factor is still going to increase. If you would have an inductor with only a parallel resistance, then what is going to change? Okay, here is my parallel resistance. I want that to be large, ideally an open circuit. So that's the reason why this is here on top. And then at the bottom, I have the uh, impedance of the inductor, omega LP, right? So you see that this one decreases with frequency. So there is an optimum, there is an optimum. And that optimum is quite different at RF than at millimeter wave. Um, based, on this, uh, based on this, you can also calculate the Q factor. An easy way to calculate the Q factor is just look at the Z in and take the imaginary part absolute value of the imaginary part, not an Im otherwise it would be an imaginary number. So you take the absolute values and you divide by the real part of the input impedance. And if you, um, if you go through the math, and I, I will give you a reference on that later on at the end, um, the quality factor of an impedance can be expressed as follows. So you see that indeed um, RS plays a role, and here we have the substrate resistance. And uh, this, this leads to an optimum because RS is here on top and then here it's at the bottom. And we also take into account the fact that as we get closer to the um, self resonance frequency, there is less inductance left to tune out. Right. So that's the reason why we have a minus sign over here. That's also meaning that um, Basically, from the inductive energy, I'm subtracting the capacitive energy. And that's a quality factor definition based on impedances. So there are two reasons why the Q factor goes down. The first one is because of the self-resonance, which is maybe not a... Uh, yeah. 
how to put this. I mean, it, there is still energy, a capacitive energy. So we will in a minute see another definition. But there are two reasons if you use this definition why your quality factor goes down. The first one is the cell resonance. The other one is a substrate. But you could also look at an inductor as part of a resonant tank. You can tune out the inductance um, with capacitance. And then you look at the quality factor as the quality factor of the resonant tank. And maybe that is more relevant in circuit design. Because in circuit design, these inductors always tune out capacitors. There's a slight uh, exception if you look at uh, inductive peaking. And there you you don't you don't have a a, a network that is uh, at, at lower frequencies having a lower impedance, but there it's just a matter of bandwidth extension. So that's a different situation. But here this should be a C, by the way. Here we have um, a, you, or or here you would typically use a different definition of your Q factor, and you look at the total energy, both inductive and capacitive energy, and you get a different uh, equation. Well, at lower frequencies, way below the cell resonance frequency, this definition or this definition is exactly the same. I mean, as long as we stay way below the cell resonance frequency. Now, why is this important to really understand? The, it's important because people often make the wrong conclusion. Let's have a look at a typical situation at RF. Uh, I'm using an inductor here of one nano Henry. I'm assuming some series resistance. I'm assuming a value for the substrate resistance, and I see some capacitance. That the, ca the substrate capacitance is basically uh, the capacitance I see when looking into the substrate. So it's a kind of a combination of that C ox and C sub. If you look at the two definitions of Q factor, they are close to each other, and the impedance Q factor is like this. The resonator Q factor is like that. Impedance Q factor goes down faster because there are two reasons why the impedance based Q factor goes down. It's the loss of the substrate, yes, but also the loss of the resonance frequency. You get closer to the self resonance frequency, so there is less inductance for the same loss. That's the reason why the impedance based Q factor goes down. If you're in this region, regardless of which definition you use, you would come to the conclusion that you need a shield. We will in a few uh, in the next part i will explain uh, shielding uh, as a general uh, concept but typically we try to shield the substrate with a pattern ground shield right and and so if you use a an inductor between or this specific inductor and you would like to use it between 5 to 10 gigahertz you see that your the q factor goes down again so you have too much loss of the substrate um, so that means that either you would have to make the, the traces a bit narrower or you Preferably, you put a shield underneath your inductor to shield the substrate loss. And you would come to that conclusion on both definitions of Q-factor. But at millimeter wave frequencies, things are quite different. Um, at millimeter wave frequencies, you have smaller, much, much smaller inductors. And as a consequence, we see far less capacitance towards the substrate. Uh, and, and because of that, because you occupy far less area, also your substrate resistance is much, much higher. So the consequence of all that is that our resonator based Q factor actually is all the way up to 100 gigahertz. It is dominated by the series resistance, uh, dominated by the skin effect. And, and it's only at much, much higher frequencies that you would see the substrate loss. But if you would use the impedance-based quality factor definition, you would observe that, well, your Q factor goes down. Q factor goes down not because of the substrate loss, but because of the fact that we get closer to um, the self resonance frequency. And using a shield has no meaning here, not at all, because we don't see the substrate loss. And that's also the reason why at millimeter wave frequencies, these inductors are being used without any pattern ground shield, shielding the inductor from the substrate because the substrate is not a problem. But be careful if you look at, if you would look at this Q factor, it goes down because of the cell resonance. It does not go down because of the substrate loss. So that is something that you would have to be careful about if you use exactly the same methodology at RF than at millimeter wave. So, um, now that we have talked about these um, th these uh, inductors and inductive quality factor, let's let's go to the next component where we put two inductors close to each other and we introduce mutual inductance, or we build a transformer.
So let's have now a look at transformers and how they behave.